Hey PCC students, welcome to Small Group. I'm Ellis Hobson and I'm the student coordinator at our Powhatan campus. If you're here for the first time, a very special welcome to you. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're here all the time, welcome back. And in any case, Merry Christmas. If you were here last week, you heard Midlothian student coordinator Lindsay Stetler kick off our Christmas series, New Seasons Greetings. I thought it was pretty great myself. And if you thought so, I think you should give her a round of applause. Honestly, though, the words Christmas series still feel a little bit crazy to say. I can't believe that we are just over a week away from Christmas. This time of year always makes me think about what Christmas was like when I was a kid, which was not that long ago, so cut it out with those jokes. I'm looking at you, middle schoolers, okay? Anyway, when I was a kid, Christmas must have been chaos for my parents. I can remember when the presents started to appear under the tree in the weeks and days leading up to Christmas Day. That's when the anticipation began. My younger brother and I would spend a ton of time wondering what was under the wrapping paper, shaking the boxes in the hopes of getting a clue of what was inside, and maybe, maybe even sneaking a peek when we could get away with it. I hope my mom doesn't watch this, but you know, it is what it is. All that anticipation finally paid off when Christmas Day arrived, and we got to tear those presents open and celebrate getting exactly what we wanted. And if you think it ended there, then you're wrong. We were just getting started because once, those, once we finally opened those gifts, it was time to show and tell everyone. And I mean everyone. We would tell our extended family, friends, that random guy on the street, literally anyone who would listen about what we got for Christmas. Basically, if you saw us in the next few days, you better be prepared to sit down and hear our detailed rundown about our Christmas presents. In other words, we were just as excited to tell everyone about our gifts as we were to see what the gifts were. It makes sense that as kids we would do this, but most of you guys are teenagers. So would you do this now? You have many of the things you want and need, and hopefully you'll receive a few of them on Christmas morning. But would you start conversations with people by telling them what gifts you received? Would you go out of your way to tell strangers who didn't even ask what someone else did for you? For most of you, I would guess the answer is no, but why? Is it that as we get older, we aren't as excited or that the gifts don't mean as much to us? Think for a second about the story of Christmas. Think about when the shepherds got to the manger or when the wise men made their way to Bethlehem. Did the story end there? No, they were excited to come and see what God had done. But after they had seen and experienced God's gift, they were excited to tell everyone who hadn't seen or experienced it yet. For the next few minutes, we are going to take a look at the two responses the shepherds and the wise men had to the birth of Jesus and see how we can adopt their responses to our own lives during this Christmas season. Let's talk about New Seasons Greetings. <laughs> Let's first look at the response that the shepherds had after the angels had left in Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. You'll notice that it's the same response that the wise men had as soon as they saw the star in Matthew. We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. When they heard what God had done, that he had sent his son, they had to see it for themselves. God had given them exactly what they needed. They just didn't know it yet. And on top of that, of all people, God had made it clear to them. And they were so excited to see what God had done for them. They dropped everything to come and see. God's call to them to come and see is the same call he has for each of us. Come and see what I've done for you and what I can do for you. And this call isn't confined to the Christmas story. It echoes across the pages of the Bible. In Psalms, King David encourages us to taste and see that the Lord is good. Jesus himself encouraged people to see for themselves what a relationship with him was like when he said this in Matthew. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus knew that once people experienced the love and forgiveness that is only available through him, that they would be forever changed for the better. He also knew that once they had been changed by his love and grace, once they had seen and experienced for themselves what God had done through the gift of his son, they wouldn't be able to keep it to themselves. 
Which brings us to our second response to Christmas, go and tell. This makes sense, right? When something wonderful happens to you, telling others is just a natural response. This was definitely true for the wise men. In fact, they were so excited to tell everyone what they had seen and what God had done, that God had to intervene and tell them not to say anything until they were out of the country. But immediately after they had seen Jesus, the shepherds started telling anyone and everyone that they came into contact with what God had done for them. We see this in chapter 2 of Luke. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. These verses make me wonder if the shepherds huddled up to figure out who got to tell which part of the story. I picture a conversation like, all right, Bartholomew, you tell about the first angel, you know, the fear not for unto you is born this day part. And Ezekiel, you tell the part about the multitude of angels that surrounded us and started singing. Jedediah, you tell the part about the star. And Bill, you tell the part about Mary, Joseph, and the baby in the manger. Everybody got it? Good, let's go. There was just so much for them to tell. I can't even begin to imagine where they started, but the fact is they told everyone. They probably even told the sheep, but they're not alone. Throughout scripture, people are encouraged to tell others when God has done something for them. Luke 8 gives the account of Jesus healing a man who has been possessed by demons. And after Jesus frees and heals this man, he asks what he should do. Jesus replies, return home and tell how much God has done for you. Almost a thousand years before the birth of Jesus, the psalmist urged the people of God to tell others what he had done for them. He writes in Psalm 107, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. God showed up in the lives of these people. He made a difference in their lives and they told people about it. And when he does that for us, our response should also be to go and tell people about it. In many ways, the response is come and see and go and tell, sum up the entire arc of the gospels. Both Matthew and Luke begin with God inviting people to come to Bethlehem and see what he had done. And the Gospels end with Jesus saying that his followers should go and tell. These two responses are the ones we're going to focus on today. But there is a third response that sometimes happens on Christmas morning. I remember one year when Christmas rolled around and my brother and I were just getting interested in video games. I use air quotes here because these weren't the games some of you hope to play on your new next-gen console this Christmas. No, these were low-quality games played on a stationary PC. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, then just hang on and ask me or one of your leaders about it later. Anyway, around the time of this particular Christmas, I was obsessed with Mickey Mouse, of all things. Between that and my newfound interest in games, a Mickey Mouse computer game would have been the most clutch gift of all time. So you can imagine the feelings of shock and horror as I watched my younger brother unwrap a Mickey Mouse PC game right in front of me. I was surprised, but I didn't lose hope. There was no doubt in my mind that in just a few minutes, I was going to open a Mickey Mouse game of my own. I picked up a present that was the appropriate size and eagerly tore the wrapping paper to find Donald Duck looking up at me. Donald Duck. So what was my response? I knew that if I pouted or complained that I would get in trouble. I didn't wave the Donald Duck game around in celebration. I just went silent. Silence was the response that said, this isn't really what I want or need, and it isn't really appreciated. This is a response that so many of us have to the gift of Christmas. We don't get excited to experience the joy and presence of Jesus. We aren't in a rush to share with our family, our friends, even strangers, that Jesus has come into the world. We just go silent. So this Christmas, what's your response going to be? Will you be silent or will you come and see and go and tell? Tonight, I'm challenging you to think about your response, no matter where you might be on your faith journey. If you have never experienced the love and forgiveness that Jesus was born to provide, will you come and see for yourself? I'll tell you that there is no greater Christmas present you could ever receive than a personal relationship with him and the redemption that flows from it. And if you have experienced the miracle of Christmas for yourself, will you, like the shepherds on that first Christmas night, go and tell others what God has done for you? It might be that through you, someone else will find and worship the King whose birth we celebrate during this season. 
So before you go to your groups, let's pray together. God, thank you for today. Thank you for this place to come and uh, put all this aside and focus on you. God, this season, we celebrate your birth. And I pray that whoever might hear this, wherever they are on their journey, that we might be able to look on the response of the wise men and the shepherds. That we might be able to come and see what you have done and what you will do. And that if we have experienced that for ourselves, that we would go and tell this Christmas season. God, we thank you. We love you. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. I hope you have a great week in small group and a Merry Christmas to you.